The civil rights movement, one of the most successful movement in the country's history, was rooted in Christian faith and in the Christian church. Churches played a pivotal role from developing ideas for sit-ins and marches to hosting mass meetings and grooming activists. Martin Luther King was a Baptist preacher. His former church, Ebenezer Baptist Church, right here in Atlanta, the same church where Raphael Warnock served as senior pastor before being elected to the Senate, is now a historic landmark like many others in the South. The people of Georgia, red, yellow, brown, black, and white, stood up and said, now is the time to send the pastor from his church and a young Jewish man to represent a state in the deep south. God is up to something in the world. But will prayer and protest continue to exist in the same space? Is the church still the primary force for social justice or is the Black Lives Matter movement a world away from the civil rights movement on this issue? Church attendance is declining, including among black people. In 2000, in 2000 according to Gallup, 78% of non-Hispanic blacks said they attended church. Just 20 years later, that number is down almost 20%. In a recent Pew Research Center survey, 60% of black adults said civil rights organization had done a great deal to help black people move forward towards equality, but only 29% said that black churches have done the same. Joining us now is Assistant Professor Frank Leon Roberts, the creator of the Black Lives Matter syllabus. Frank, how are Brother you? Charles. I'm doing well. Thank Warm you. congratulations right off Very the bat good. for this show. Thank you so much. I, I want you to take a listen to what Reverend William Barber said uh, yesterday at the Andrew Brown funeral. Sure. The Holy Ghost is going to stand with you until the tapes are released. The Holy Ghost is going to stand with you until the truth comes out. The Holy Ghost is going to stand there until those that are responsible are kept accountable. What's the role, as you see it, for the church in activism and civil rights in the modern age? Sure. Well, Brother Charles, as you know, there has never been a black freedom movement in the United States where black people have not leaned on religion and faith as sources of political inspiration. You know, we know this story very well from the role that the Negro spirituals played for those enslaved African-Americans, um, or the progressive role of Christian faith for Martin Luther King, or the role of progressive Islam for Malcolm X. You know, we could go on and on. It's not really possible to talk about social justice activism in black communities without talking about spirituality and religion. Here's what's different. Young people today may be losing their religion, but they're not losing their faith. They simply are expanding our concept of what of what constitutes faith. I think what we're seeing in this particular moment is the rise of what we might call black secular faith, right? A lot of young people today don't have faith in a particular religious deity, but they do have faith in the movement. They have faith in activism as a source of social transformation. They have faith in the idea that tomorrow can be better than today. They have faith in this idea that we can actually build a more perfect union. And so people may be losing religion, but they're not losing faith. And even the idea of church, I can't tell you, Brother Charles, how many times when we were in Ferguson, uh, people would say that being in the streets, they were born again, so to speak, or that being at a protest, that that was a form of church. And so all of that is to say, I think what's happening in this moment is we are seeing more an expansion of spirituality, not a decrease. And that's important because it's continuing a black radical tradition. Right, but but you're, you're, separate, you're, you're separating spirituality from religion. You're separating this, this, cool. this kind of secular faith from a religious faith. You, you're, you're kind of agreeing that these young people are not seeing, you know, viewing religion as central to their mission and their activism in the way that people did in the civil rights movement, right? Am I hearing that right? Well, what I'm saying is that people are expanding what is the what is at the core of religion, which is faith. But all, but yes, I think that they're definitely but not but not abandoning expanding but not abandoning. 
Are you saying expanding, expanding but, not, but not abandoning? Or are they just grow that, they're they're keeping that faith and adding on to it? I think that we are we are witnessing an expansion because also the traditional faith in the traditional black church has actually seen a resurgence during this past moment, not a decline. You think about William Barber, Reverend Sekou, Tony Blackman, Starsky Wilskin, we could go on and on. That the black church, if anything, has been resurrected in the age of BLM. It has not seen, uh, it's not been crucified. So two things are happening at once. We actually see a reemergence of the traditional black church, as well as an expansion of faith to include non-Christian practices, and, and as well as a more um, broad understanding of what we mean by faith to begin with. Now the, now, the church in general has not always given a warm welcome to queer people, people part of the LGBT community. But many of the leaders of BLM are people who are part of the LGBT community. How do you make that make sense? How do you square that circle? Well, first of all, again, remember it's so yes, the church has historically been a hostile place, but one of the things that we've the one of the things that the Black Lives Matter movement has done is forced the black community writ large to have uh, a more robust conversation about gender and sexual difference and churches are doing that as well. So actually, um, you know, I don't have the empirical data in front of me, but we, over the course of the past seven years, we actually see churches becoming much more welcoming and more affirming in their messaging regarding gender and sexuality. And I think that's directly as a result of the kind of partnerships the black church is having with this queer movement, which is BLM. So there's a lot of synergy happening where both of these forces are kind of uh, pulling and tugging at each other, but ultimately Black Lives Matter as a movement is winning because people have more religious options, churches are becoming more um, affirming and inclusive, and churches understand that if they want to get with the movement, then they're going to have to be willing to get with queer people, get with women, get with all the things that kind of uh, deviate away from traditional uh, approaches to scripture. With, with the curriculum that, that, that you created, you talk a lot to young people at schools, colleges. What do they tell you about the importance of religious faith, not the secular faith, but religious faith in their activism? Uh, many of them say that, first of all, uh, the black community at large is still largely religious in a Christian sense, right? Uh, but we also have many faith traditions. Many of these young people today tell me that it is in the church that they learn to care about justice. It is in the church where they begin to see the direct relationship between what their pastor was doing and what Martin Luther King was doing. It was in the church that they uh, 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 begin to learn it's forgiveness, like which is important, right? And so for all these reasons, the church for a lot of these young people has been an important source of political inspiration. And even though they may have left the church, the church never left them in the sense that many of them are still moving forward with those, um, with those, uh, that kind of spiritual grounding. Frank Roberts, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on to talk to us about this tonight.